Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the General Hospital recap for October 25th through 29th. I'll say it. Where did October go? <laughs> Just remember it was you this time, not me. I know. It was me last month too. I guess 2021 is the year of Shannon not understanding how time works. There you go. Not saying that you... Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. So I do have one quick correction on myself that nobody called me out on, but I just get bothered by things. It's the mice could make her dress look so pretty, not her. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay. From our Alan Quartermain part four, I was singing the work song from Cinderella and I messed up a lyric, but I was really happy this week. This is not reality check, but uh, do you know who Candace DeLong is? She does like all the ID networks. She's like the gorgeous, like dark hair, oh, yeah, bright yeah. blue eyes. Yeah. Do you know how old she is? No. She's much older than you th- think she would be. Hold on. Let me look up her age. Because I was like, wait, what? And what does that have to do with Hold Cinderella? On. It, it, it does. <laughs> okay. She's 71. Oh, my right? God. Right. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. No, no, so goals. What? what does that have to do so with she Cinderella? Ha- she has a podcast called Killer Psyche. And this week I was listening to the episode of when Mark David Chapman killed John Lennon. And she accidentally said when John's delusions became blah, 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 John's life was more in danger or something like that. She meant to say Mark. And I was like, if Candace DeLong can make a mistake, like (laughs) saying John was going to kill himself instead of Mark David Chapman killing him, I'm okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't think anyone was going to yell at you. I did think of you. Yesterday we had the U-Haul and I had Megan sleep it out because she did like nothing to help with this move. So I said, here, you can sleep it out. And so and as she, she also never saw the house. So how much does she have really invested in it until it was already bought? No, moving so, on to the old house. I know. She still wants her stuff from the old house to the new yeah. house or it's going to get tossed out. But anyway. It was a joke in my head. It didn't make sense. <laughs> like what? So I had her sleeping out the U-Haul. And as she started sleeping, she was like, what's that song from Cinderella? And I was like, oh, let's call it Sam and just have her sing for you. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> I was not going to disturb you at midnight. You're welcome. Well, th- thank you. I was sleeping. Yeah. Don't ever call me <laughs> at midnight asking me for a Cinderella song. Okay. Just remember Cinderella, pumpkin, midnight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got it. I'm a pumpkin at like nine. So hmm. yeah. I don't know how you stay out until four o'clock in the morning regularly. I got three hours of sleep yesterday. So. But that's typical for you. No, not three hours. Mm-mm. Okay. But yeah. But on happier General Hospital news, Chad Duell and Courtney Hope got married. Their wedding was crazy. Steampunk themed. So Super crazy. cool. I can't decide if I love it or I hate it. It was It was so them. Different. That's all that matters. That's how they had their wedding. No, I know. But when I first saw it, I was like, oh. And then I was like, oh, I don't know. And then I kept looking at it and I still have not made up my mind. Not that they care. I'm just saying. Her dress was I beautiful, think- though. So people thought that we were weird because we had a Beatles themed wedding and they're like, oh my God, it's going to be so tacky. And then we had so many compliments on it because, oh. and it doesn't really matter. It was our wedding. Yes. So love or hate the Beatles. Someone did jokingly say that they were going to wear a Rolling Stones t-shirt to our wedding. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm like, if that's the worst thing that happens on my wedding day, I'm good. Exactly. Yep. But on a sadder note, Maurice Bernard's father passed away. That is very sad. We'll get to my reality check later, but I feel like this is exactly how my week was. Like, high highs and low lows. No, not very much in between. It was a very emotional week, but we'll get to that later. Okay. I'm on the edge of my seat. Yeah, it's not that exciting. It's just high highs and lows lows. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, if you read his book, Nothing General About It, you read a lot about he had a difficult relationship with his father, but he always admired his father and... His dad loved all my children. And so he was really bummed when <laughs> he didn't get all my children and he got General Hospital instead. And now his dad became a huge General Hospital fan. Did not like Jason and Carly together as a couple, apparently. Wow. But, you know. That's so cute. Just sending our love to movies. Yeah. So where do you want to get started on General Hospital? You can start because I didn't take any notes this week. Perfect. Mm-hmm. I love that I have two pages. Okay. 
Um, I guess we could just start with Sunny. There's a lot of Sunny to go through. There is? Yeah. Okay. Sunny referred to him and Nina as a we. Carly is going to flip out. I give her a lot of credit for how she's been honestly handling it because that can't be easy. Nina is too smug about it. Mm -hmm. She's going to end up, Carly's going to have to go off. Yeah. There's just no way not to. I don't feel like Sunny is really trying to hide it, hide it though. I think he really is trying to do it so that she's not hurt by it. Right. Because he knows how hurt. He just needs to come clean about it. He does. He just has to, they have to sit down and really just talk about the fact, hey, remember how you were starting to fall in love with my best friend? Well, I kind of fell in love with your enemy while I was unconscious. Right. So, uh, my subconscious, my amnesia. Right. Amnesia. Yeah. So I don't know. Right. They've discussed a lot of stuff happened in the nine months. They can't go back and change it because they didn't know yep. what the other one was doing. So. And she's come clean about everything. Yeah. You know, he just, he kind of just needs to return the favor. Especially because he knows that Nina's going to, and she's going to do it at the meanest possible second. Right. But he asked Michael to back off. Although I really did love the court scene. Mm -hmm. When Carly's like, hey, great job. Until she finds out how he did it. Right. And then she's like, "Um, yeah, so you're going to get in trouble for that. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. But he said he talked to his lawyers. Michael is all in the clear. It'll I still be okay. don't think she, li- but I don't think she liked that at all. I don't think she did either. But, and like Sasha reminded Willow, he is a Corinthos and a Quarterman. Yes. And that's coming through. Mm hmm. Yep. We'll get to that in a minute. I like that they're still friends, but I feel like that's a really weird conversation. I don't think I could say to, but she's all happy and in love with Brando and she's moved on in her own. It's so weird that Willow said, did anything like that happen when you were with him? Like, let's not compare notes that way. Well, they're not comparing, as you put it a couple of weeks ago, conversations. (laughs) (laughs) They're not comparing intimate notes. They're comparing relationship. Yeah, I still. mm -mm. I had girls reach out to me after my ex and I, and I was like, that has nothing to do with me. So you need to. Yeah. Like, that's your relationship, not mine. Right. I can't help you. Sorry. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, I would not want my ex and Ryan talking about me. No. Mm-mm. So I guess we could just go straight to Willow and Michael and what? Okay, wait. Is that kitchen? I think that's the gatehouse. Then why was Brooklyn there? Who knows? <laughs> okay. No, maybe maybe it was the kitchen then. Maybe they just... No. The one that Willow and Michael Willow were in? Willow and Michael were in it, but then Brooklyn and Charlotte were in it. I didn't even pay. I did not. Because I thought it was the gatehouses too. And I thought that's really funny that the living room space goes right upstairs. And on the other side is this huge kitchen because right. that feels a little weird for a gatehouse. But at the same time, I was not understanding why Michael and well, Willow Well, if they don't were have there. a dining room, then having like a bro- breakfast nook like that would make sense for the gatehouse. Yeah. But again, then why was Brooklyn and Charlotte there? Is that the room that they were in? Hold yes. on. I took a picture of Charlotte. Let's see. I can't believe how old she's looking. She's so I beautiful, know. but I did not like how grown up she was. They were there and then they were in the hospital. Well, we know the hospital's not the kitchen. Well, thanks. I meant <laughs> depending on what picture you took. Yeah. Uh-huh. Eating her sugary cereal. <laughs> her acting skills were adorable there with that. Oh my gosh, this is so good face. We posted that on so social cute. media. I'm like, has there ever been a more real so cute. moment in soap opera? Then her eating sugar cereal for the first time, crossing her eyes like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Well, maybe that's why they went is because maybe the quarter mains don't have sugary cereal. And Brooklyn's like, you know who's got the good stuff? The parents of toddlers. Okay. They got the best cereal. Okay. Maybe she snuck in and was like, nope, we're getting you the good stuff, girly. All right. I'll take that answer. I was more worried for a few minutes that... Perhaps I, I could not picture Valentine not letting Charlotte know that she has a health condition, that she should not be having these things. Right. But like, I was worried that she was really going to respond badly to it. Oh. And then I have be it, like an issue like, what the heck? But I love that Brooklyn was stepping in mm-hmm. to care for Charlotte and to take her to see Valentine and all that fun stuff. Yeah, but now she's going to be all kind of conflicted even more because she's falling in love with Charlotte right at the same time that Valentine's going to find out all the truth about Bailey. 
And then Charlotte's going to hate her and it's going to be sad. Yep. Poor Charlotte's been through enough. She has. She really has. Let's give her a mom that can stick around for a while, okay? Anna. You know, we still haven't talked about Michael and Willow. I'm going to make a face with the <laughs> Anna comment, but okay. Michael and Willow. It was really anticlimactic. He proposed. I like that she called him out on that. You're proposing to fix a problem. I don't want a ring that way. Thanks anyway. Well, he didn't have a ring, but I don't want a proposal that way. Thanks anyway. Yeah. And she literally just said, I can't get... The thing was, though, she's like, I can't promise you all when I'll be ready, but it won't be that long. Which one is it? Right. Like, what's the definition of it won't be that long? I did like that she called him out on being so dishonest Mm -hmm. and leaving her out of important decisions. And I just, I, I hate it. They're not saying anything bad about the time that she was with Chase, but it's like she's forgetting the fact that Chase helped her through. Yes. All of that stuff. And it's like, she's, they're making her imply it's only been Michael who's been able to help her through this devastation. No, no. Like Chase literally caught you when you were falling apart and gave you the space to heal and Mm -hmm. all of that. It's, mm. I mean, I guess in the grand scheme of things, them at least just not acknowledging it isn't as bad as rewriting it where true Chase did nothing, but just not even acknowledging it. I didn't like the way that they threw in Chase in Brooklyn this week. Like it had been an ongoing thing. He suddenly kisses her on the cheek. He suddenly kisses her on the cheek. And and most people on social media are digging it. I, it's not that I'm not digging the relationship. It's just like, really, you could have given us a few more flirty flirts, conversations at the house. Something. According to Charlotte, they spend right. a lot of time together. Exactly. Though. Well, that's what I mean. You saw the kiss yeah. on the cheek and Charlotte wrap them out. Yep. I would have liked to see in some of those interactions. Yeah, we had 47 comments on, are you looking forward to their relationship and all but like a handful were yes and that was just on instagram my problem with it is going to be that when it actually happens is gonna be it's gonna happen and then he's gonna find out out. yeah and then that's gonna break them up and then brooklyn's gonna be heartbroken can't we just have a happy couple for a little bit that was the biggest complaint was in general people don't want to root for any couple because they just keep getting taken apart yeah so what's the point Yes, we do know that it's a show, but we still get emotionally invested in these people. And it doesn't have to only be exciting to see people break up and then move on with someone else. You can keep excitement in the lasting relationships. Like with Brando and Sasha. I know they're a new relationship, but still, the fact that every week they're so excited to see each other and it's all googly-eyed is adorable. Yeah. But Chase does call Brooklyn out on her crap. Yeah. Like he did it this week. He's like, so you really think that was the right decision? Like taking away his medical license. You really think that was the correct choice there. I think he's definitely going to make her a better person and that she's definitely going to bring out the fun in him. Mm -hmm. It'll be a good relationship. I just hope that they can work through him finding out the truth about Bailey instead of him saying, I really don't know Another woman lied to me. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they find out beforehand. Maybe he'll find out beforehand. Maybe. And then I can't think that Gladys is going to keep this secret too long. No. That was really smart the way they had her find out though. I was not expecting Gladys I to be the one that. to and put and, it all together in such a non sneaky way. Well, like, and it makes sense. Yeah. I can't type that fast. So I record our conversations so that I can go back and although I do believe you're supposed to at least let one person know, right? In New York. Although that is that just for evidence? I don't know. I don't know so, what the rules are for New York. Yeah, I don't know. I I loved it. Probably not, especially where they were in the restaurant, because when you're in public, there's no expectation of privacy. Yeah. Yeah. In the office, you might be able to argue if she's doing it because you think that's a private place. But in the restaurant, no one could fault her for that. If she's... The thing is, she's overdoing it Mm -hmm. because, I mean, she obviously knows she can blackmail Maxie too. Right. But... If she wants but any, she doesn't know that she can blackmail Maxie yet because she doesn't know that the baby's Maxie's. No, but she knows that Maxie knows that Valentine's yes. not the father because she right. was part of the conversation. So yeah, but she at least knows. I know I can loop Maxie in on this because she knows the truth also. So there's obviously some level of right. I got you too. Mm-hmm. But to be so, I'm gonna go down to the spa to the bar in my robe and or go down to the bar from the spa in my robe to get a drink 
in front of everybody when I'm very much supposed to be at work, stay home and binge Netflix and eat some ice cream. Right. If you really want to be stealthy, you know, don't go flaunting. Yeah, I'm not working today, but you're paying me and we're going to buy everything on my corporate credit card. That's mm-hmm. not. Yeah. And all you're going to do is make your son mad because his girlfriend also is part of the business, even though she doesn't know the truth. Right. It's still affecting. So especially where she's trying so hard to maintain a relationship with Brando. She just needs to think like two steps ahead sometimes before she's so entitled. She thinks that she should have everything. So there is no thinking ahead. It's all about her. Yeah. I like Brando calling her. I just love how he just puts her out. Like he puts her in her place. And I like the way that she reacted. Gladys reacted of don't even know who your baby daddy is, blah, blah, blah. And it, they automatically <gasps> thought oh, Sasha. That was, that was so good. So good. Like, that was very good. Yes. And her face, she like, all that's out. not what I meant, she but okay. <laughs> mm, that was great. Yeah. And then Violet got a house. Yes. Finally. Finally. Moving out of the Metro Court eight months later. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. But Liz tore up a picture of Grandpa Jeff and Violet's like, and he wouldn't want to meet me. What? I know. That was like, so excuse cute. me. She's like, like, what are you talking about? Who Someone just wouldn't want to hang out with me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was the other thing I forgot to write down. Other joyous thing. Um, Ava Olsen is in the world. Teo and Eric are big brothers. Aww. The oh actors gosh. formerly known as Baby Wiley are now officially big brothers to baby Ava and they're all doing well. So cute. Sorry, that just like popped in my head. I was like, oh, that's right. They're going to be so cute. Mm -hmm. They'll be the best big brothers. That's going to be adorable. Yes, 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 yes. It's a shame that they couldn't stay around because they could have made baby sister Brando's. Oh, yes. Sorry, that was really... (laughs) (laughs) She got very excited there. That would have been adorable. That would have been so cute. Aww. We're happy for dad having a job yes. that transferred them to Paris. Yes. It's not going to lie. If my husband's job transferred him to Paris, I would move in a minute. You'd have to leave me. We can do this virtually. <laughs> I'll be like Charlotte. You'd, I'd be finally on your time. Though. <laughs> I don't know what the time difference is. I don't know either. Then you can call me at your midnight and it'll be like my noon. There you go. I don't know what the time difference is. So I really apologize. Time in Paris. Hold on. Although I don't remember all my French. Okay, it's 5.30 there, so there's a five-hour difference. So, yeah, I'd be waking up. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, yeah, so when do we think uh, Mr. Jeff Weber is going to be making an appearance? Mm, I bet not until, like, Thanksgiving. That's what I was thinking. He'll show up for Thanksgiving with a pie or something and be like, hey. And Aiden will be like, hey, that's not as good as my pie. What are you doing? Yep, exactly. I do not have a cherry pitter. That was so cute when Finn called it a cherry picker because I would do the exact same thing. <laughs> Who actually owns that device? I do not make fresh. I don't make cherry pies, period. Apple, yes. Cherry, no. I want to see Aiden's kitchen. Mm -hmm. I thought it was cute, though, that they got him all the... Chase gave him the apron. Yeah. And Violet was like, come here, Dad. Pick me up. Kiss the cook. (laughs) Oh, he got her violets for his favorite Violet. Yes. They seriously need... Mm. He needs a good woman. He needs to be in a family. Ava did say she's going to give the keys to Christina. So, yay. Yay. Keep Christina on at the bar. Nice. You cannot buy a business that quickly. Mm-mm. I don't care how good your attorneys are, Sonny. That, that, it would have been Ava's that were that good because he was the one that said already. And she's like, yep, sign the paperwork. Yeah, but then he said to Carly, my attorneys are that good. But it wouldn't have been his attorney. That didn't make sense, right? Because her attorney would be the one that draws she's the out. No, the buyers. Oh, okay. You just went through this. I ain't good <laughs> I know the buyers. Remember we talked about that with the Monica selling the house and everything that the buyers did not do their due diligence with. It's the settlement company that writes everything up, but they're hired okay. by the buyer. Okay. Unless he's leasing it. Unless she leases it. No, I think she sold it outright. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Well, I don't know. Real estate has its own. It has its own time people there too. Sonny's just magical. Okay. <laughs> you don't have the people he has working for him. Sorry. All right. Note to Scott. We do not call Pennsylvania the Keystone State that much. <laughs> We don't. We don't. We don't. I'm going to start referring to it like that. We call it PA. Yes. We're the only state that refers to itself by its initials. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to be saying the Keystone State so much, in my opinion, because they just kept saying it. They really like to specify Pennsylvania. They do. the other side of the river in Pennsylvania. Yep. Yep. Did not like that Ava was coercing Nina to remember, to remind Sunny that they fell in love. No. Mm -hmm. Not a fan. Mm -hmm. But 
where Nina was extradited to for the 24 hours is Lantano County, which is Landview, which is where One Life to Live was. Ooh. And it's located on the Lantano River across from all my children's Pine Valley. Nice. Love that circle there. And Nina is all concerned about all the fires that happened at Crimson Mm -hmm. in her 24 hours, but not the nine months. Right. She was just gone. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. She had a lot of business to get back to. God only knows how many fires there are for me to put out after that. Well, really bad choice of words too. Yeah. (laughs) Cause that's kind of what got her in this. Right. Sunny should have called her out on that one. Yeah. Spencer finally getting a job. Yeah, we said he should. Thank you. Finally. Yep, yep, yep. Although I'm still not sure why we didn't think of them staying in the rooms above Kelly's, but whatever. And did Esme move in with them? I, think I feel so. like that was just like unclear. It was unclear, but I feel like it was. It did. And he well, he's the only one that had to get a job. She doesn't have to do anything. No, apparently not. But Cam's the new assistant manager. And they mentioned that Bobby, oh, what it was something about Bobby, something about her employees. But Bobby's the owner. Who's the actual manager? Because we know Bobby doesn't. Right. It was Joss that said, Grandma Bobby. What was it? I don't know. Like, I can't I remember. see her. Because I wrote counter. it. Okay. So Bobby owns Kelly's. That makes sense. But I did like that Esme actually tried to help Spencer get a job. Like, hey, Cam, do you know where he can get a job? But now yes. Cam's the assistant manager and he's going to college. That's a lot. It is a lot. That's And playing soccer. Mm-hmm. That's a lot for that young man. He can handle it. Although... Joss having that conversation with Spencer about pride in work and you should be proud of yourself and there's nothing wrong with having a job. Um, you don't have one. She pointed out because he kind of said that you're talking about money and privilege. Like you don't have it. Your family has more money than mine probably. And she said, yeah, but she doesn't have to have a job right now because she has not disappointed her parents in the same way that he has. That's true. But still, that's kind of one of those. She still knows what hard work is, though, because she's getting good grades and she's on the volleyball team. And she's on the volleyball team and she's like captain or she was in high school and everything. But she doesn't understand financially having to work. No. You know, so yeah, it's great that she's all proud of Cam, but she doesn't understand that he has to. Right. Whereas she gets the choice. I like that Ava seemed to see right through Esme's crap. I loved that. And wasn't a hundred percent certain at first. I'm like, is Esme really sorry? And then the little no. smirk at the end, I was like, no, you're not. Now she's scared though, I think. Yes. I think she forgot to do her research on Ava Jerome. Mm-hmm. But it was beautiful because Ava did not get snippy. She did not yell. She nope. didn't say anything nasty. She let her say everything. She was even being super nice. So I hope that you can help Spencer learn this and that and blah, blah, blah. And then at the end was like, but by the way, yeah, you cross me again. You won't know what hit you. But back to the having to work thing, Nicholas being so ashamed that Spencer has a job. Like you never had one. Right. It, mm, uh-uh. Maybe a job will keep him busy so he's not off pretending to be dead with other people like Uncle Victor and you. Right. And Ava calling him out on, yeah, so you knew this. Yeah. This is this is not news to you. Exactly. But so Victor's who found Nicholas after he had been shot by Valentine. Mm-hmm. And so they just held each other. They blackmailed each other with each other's. I guess so. Non-death. Right. Right. You're pretending to be dead. So am I. Let's just keep it under wraps together. Yeah. It's very weird. I don't understand. And him insisting that that land was sold. If you were trying to keep it undercover, wouldn't you actually have paperwork to back that up? He seems very confused. Didn't he say that he could? He's like, I can prove prove it to you. He said, I'll get it for you or whatever. But I'm not sure that he has proof. People don't just carry deeds around in their pocket or sales agreements. I understand. I don't even. (laughs) I understand that. But I'm not convinced. But I can get it for you. Yeah. I don't think that he has the right paperwork, though. I think he was thinking he could type up something official enough and pass it on. But once they said that Victor was alive, it was like, oh, crap, you're going to like right run this now. I can't. Yeah, yeah. ABC company that I was going to say bought it. You're going to see is connected to Victor. And if he's still alive, that's going to be wrong. Right. Right. Did not like Nicholas blackmailing Alexis. Mm mm. Oh, mm mm. But I like that Sean was on her side. He was like, so you're going to get out. And she's like, no. And good for her. Exactly. She's like, I actually did my crime. Right. 
I'm excited to see them keep working together. I like how they are. I don't understand what is going on with Sean. What does he think he's going to do with Spencer? First of all, I feel like it's, I understand we've had this discussion before, but Spencer really is still a child. Mm -hmm. That feels out of character for me for Sean to manipulate somebody's child into, do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's even, even back in the day, like, I feel like that's not something he would do. Yes and no, because Spencer is a child in the way that we know because we have kids the same age and they're just not the greatest sometimes, mature enough sometimes, but he's not a kid and he has enough worldly experience. I don't feel like Sean, but for him to, we always talk about the fact like, don't bring your kids into your relationships. Right. That's kind of the same thing. Like until you actually have the proof that Nicholas had Hayden shot. Don't tell the kid. But he needs the kid to get the proof. I know. But that's just the, like, but that's the thing. They're already on the outs. What's Nicholas going to do? Confess to Spencer? Probably. When they're not in a good place? When they get in a good place or he thinks they're in a good place, maybe it'll be a teaching opportunity. Hey, listen. Don't and to try do it to for murder Violet, people. And don't let... Her- that was the thing that I didn't like. Yes. You grew up without a mom. Here, let me just rub some salt in your wound. And I will agree. That was that, crossing the line. That's where, okay. Cause I'm like, I just looked down. I was like, nope. It was the violet thing that I was like, I agree. It felt super yucky to me. Yeah. No, that wasn't okay. You know, super yucky. Gold stars and super yucky. That's where it's for rating things. We've said it before. Somebody has to be listening to our show from the writing team. Love in Maine has not been mentioned for years on the show. I thought the same thing. And this week it's mentioned. Oh, and they were on Pier 54 again this week. Yes, they were. So yes, they were. So I did you. get that. I'm going to just say thank you to whoever's listening for including us because I'm sure that was a shout out to us. And absolutely feeling- because they're giving us credit because they listened because we said TJ and Molly should be doing a podcast. And now Molly's suggesting it to Sean. And I'm like, yes, Sean should do a podcast. We can teach you how to do it. Exactly. And. Molly brought up all the love and main stuff yep. and he was like, don't you want to go back to writing? And I was like, yes, Molly, come out with another book so we can do another book club on it. And all the notes that TJ gave her were from him. That was so sweet. He let you read my and book. And I really liked yes. that he was like, can I call you my daughter-in-law? Like, is that how I refer mm-hmm. to you? And she's like, especially the in-law part. Yep. Like the in-law <laughs> right. part. Yeah. But I, I was- like the, I think that that would be great for Sean to do a podcast. Mm-hmm. He's got the voice too. Oh my. I would listen to that. Oh my God. Yes. I would listen to that. <laughs> yeah. He could talk about pretty much anything. <laughs> so writers, while you're, while you're listening to us, hi. <laughs> Seriously. Love in Maine has not I know. been mentioned I know. for years. Right. And it would have been one thing if he said, well, you were a writer. I thought that was the path you were going to take, but they specifically said, yep. Love in Maine. And he took the notes and whatever. So. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yay. But I do think that would be good for him to do the podcast. I, I was excited at first when we suggested that Molly and TJ do it because they also have, she has the law background, you know, he has a medical background. So they have eyes on yes, but they're very two busy. of the most important things that there's inequity in. Right. Healthcare and legal. Mm-hmm. So they're Sean in the mix. Maybe he can just interview them. That would be fun. You know, we talked about the fact that Oh my gosh, actress that plays Molly. Haley. I was going to say, why did you do that? Has her own podcast. Yes. Yes. So it's her own true crime podcast. Oh, we still didn't find out who the guy is. No. And now he's all questioning Portia. They're... Thank you, Portia, <laughs> for bringing up. It was weird. Mm-hmm. He asked me one question about the club and then started asking all these questions about you. And I even said, Gee, you seem really interested in the owner. And then he just kept pressing on. No, I'm just. Come on, dude. Yeah. Mm -mm. So weird. But I thought they were going to tell us. I thought Curtis was going to say, that sounds like so-and-so. Give us some direction. And instead. Nope. He loves art. Have him, have them dictate a composite sketch to him. Exactly. (laughs) Now we can see Curtis's love for art. Oh, Ned going to Austin. And Austin being like. Yeah, you didn't want my help, remember? If so, you would have stood up for me whenever your daughter was blackmailing me. So you'll need to call the specialist yourself and see where to go from there. Yep. Just about the exact same thing that I wrote down. (laughs) 
Ned asking Austin for help and good for him standing his ground, telling Ned that he didn't help him. Is that true that step parents can't make an appointment? I know that I have had to sign a lot of papers for my husband doing stuff for my daughter. Huh. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Hi, Google. <laughs> Could be a New York thing. Maybe. Maybe because know. they are, but it depends on also probably, oh, that's Pennsylvania. Hold on. New York. Step parents do not have the legal right to consent medical treatment for their st stepchildren in most states, according to Love to Know from All About Family by Dr. Kristen McCarthy. In the United States, approximately 40% of married couples with children are blended family. That means that in each of those households, at least one half the couple is helping raise their spouse's children. The question is often raised, what rights do step parents have when it comes to their stepchildren? Married step parents living with their stepchild do automatically have the right to review stepchild's school records. Okay. So he could go to the school. Like he's objecting. I know. I think it's silly too. However, if they don't have guardianship, they cannot make legal decisions on school. And step parents do not have the legal right to consent medical treatments for the stepchildren in most states. However, there are legal ways to change this. You can get a power of attorney. You can legally change your custody parenting to include step parents and medical rights. Huh. Huh. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like calling and making an appointment, most specialists don't see you tomorrow. So Ned could call and make that appointment. They're not going to ask what his relationship to the child is, like to prove it. So, okay, I'm the dad because his dad's dead. So there you go. All right, we're not going to Google all of that. No, we're not gonna say, no. But I wonder if the fact that Julian is deceased and he is currently married to his mother, probably what, not if he hasn't legally adopted him. But yeah, again, I would. I don't know. Not saying to be dishonest here, but I'd make the appointment because you know it's at least three months out, and then work on Olivia to get her to accept it. Because if you wait till she accepts it in three months, and You're then waiting have to make more. another appointment, now we're six months out. Yep. So. Hmm. Not telling anyone to break rules, just saying I would. <laughs> so it's to get your kid help. Yep. But I was just surprised whenever he said that because I thought, really? You can't? Yeah. Call? I mean, it makes sense ish, but not really. But like, my husband's always been super involved. Well, yeah. So you know, the only experience I have is my ex and Matt, and he didn't adopt him. But that was who I put down as dad on all paperwork because that was his dad. So right is his dad. So yeah, like he took him for medical stuff. Right. And no one ever questioned it. But I think the reason they probably didn't question it is because he was on his insurance. Mm. So it came mm. up under that insurance policy. Yeah. Oh, there's that question too. Whose insurance is Leo under? So, okay. If Leo <laughs> We're is really under, getting into this. Leo is under Ned's insurance. but. That still doesn't, because as soon as the kids turn, what is it, 12 now, mm -hmm. we can't even access their medical records without proxy? So many questions. Okay, so <laughs> if you know the answer, please email us at peer54podcast at gmail.com. Thank you. Get so many answers that are like, you guys pick the weirdest things to get stuck on. I apologize. Because neither of us are planning on, A, moving to New York anytime soon, <laughs> B... Well, that, none of that really applies to us, but still. It just, I don't know, stuck out in my head whenever he yeah. said that. Because I'm like, huh, can't make a simple appointment, but okay. But I like that Austin stood his ground was my yeah. point of, yes, your child needs to be seen, but nope, I cannot help you because you could have spoke up there, buddy. Yep, 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 yep. I like Carly's rule of one piece of candy for every year you're born. Yes. Or alive. <laughs> you're only born one year. <laughs> <laughs> I liked the way that Avery said that the way a kid would of mommy Carly said I can only have one piece. And she's like, no, that's not what I said. You can have one piece per year, but she doesn't know where the Kit Kats go. So, so true. So Madeline is going trick or treating at her dad's and he loves Reese's peanut butter cups. And so do I. And so it is like a big thing every year where I'm like, Madeline, don't you give him all of this Reese's peanut butter cups because mommy needs some. I didn't know until my son was probably 10, 11, that he had never had a Butterfinger because I would always take them out of his bag. Oh. And I didn't realize that I always took them. 
<laughs> he finally had one. He's like, well, these are amazing. I was like, I know. I oh. Uh, <laughs> that is so funny. I know, because I always do this. <laughs> sorry. So sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but Pilar is the nanny. Yeah. We got a name. Yeah. Just need a face. Mm-hmm. Cyrus called Sonny. It was nice to see our friend Jeff Cober. I liked that Sonny was all mad. He doesn't know we're friends. But <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need to know. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We have lots of friends that they don't know that we're the I friends. Know. One day we will be friends, Jeff. That's right. Just you wait. <laughs> Your life is going to be so changed. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> we were actually talking about you not knowing because I sent those picture of him Mm -hmm. to our friends who also watch new girl yes and they're like remy and i'm like yeah i had to show amanda he's not as creepy as cyrus he can be silly so i was over there the one day watching the girls and obviously when both parents are home and not sleeping because they work crazy shifts i will leave well, they were both home and she's like, oh my gosh, this is my favorite episode of New Girl. <laughs> you have to watch it. And she like started it from the beginning. And I was like, you know, I'm not going to sit here and watch your TV while you're both awake to, to be with your kids. You didn't watch New Girl? I, I didn't. Aww. I didn't. I, I mean, I've seen some of it now from being over there yeah. when she's doing other things around the house. But it was funny that day. It was She was actually restarting it for me to watch. And I'm like... Was it the one no, with Remy? I'm going to go home now. Thank you. But, uh, I don't know. I've seen him on it. Okay. It runs in the background all the time. But I don't know that that was the episode that she okay. said was her favorite. I'm sorry. But yeah. And then I just have a couple little... Jason's seriously losing his touch. Why did he leave, leave Britt alone? And I'm sorry. How did that guy not just shoot her? <laughs> you can kidnap me later. <laughs> Okay, Cookie. I mean, no one's going to kidnap me. I'm sorry. <laughs> you just scarred your cat for life. Now he's a cat therapist. She just jumped up and was like, no. No, I will save you. Don't get kidnapped. But like, come on. What? No. Yeah. No. And then Anna questioning happily ever after with a Cassidine. Is it possible? Dun, dun, dun. I don't know. Gladys bringing him that bear. She's so ridiculous he kind of he's like all right so i have to go to sleep now and she's like okay plop yeah i'm just gonna sit right down here and and then she made a point of saying that bear's for you not for the kiddos Mm -hmm. okay he doesn't want your big dumb bear what are you talking about yep just weird i don't understand how she thinks that's gonna do anything if you want to come to him with the information come to him with the information if not then leave him alone yep because he doesn't know that you're being sneaky with information that he doesn't know exists Correct. So one last thing about Esme. I forgot to bring it up. Shans, Leela, Leila, Leela. Apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name. I want an Esme reveal where she is actually a runaway Lila Ray Alcazar using Spencer and looking for answers about her presumed dead father, Lorenzo. That would be awesome. That would be amazing. Amazing. Oh my gosh. All the twists. Everyone involved in Lorenzo's murder cover up has a teen relative she interacts with. Spencer is Sonny's nephew. Cameron is Liz's son who testified at the trial. Joss is Carly's kid. She could easily be after the truth. Is her father alive as hmm. so? That would be so good. Why she hates Joss because her mother being possibly involved in her father's murder cover up and Cam's mom testified at the trial. She could be using them all. Love it. Yes. Bring it back around. That would be amazing. Oh, but I don't want an evil Lila. Okay. (laughs) That's not your namesake. Esme, if you're really Lila, yeah. But that's it. I don't know. I mean, yes, evil, obviously, because setting people's cars on fire is crazy. But Lila was very determined to get what she wanted. She just did it nicely. I don't think she would ever blow up. She never did anything bad. No. She just, she killed them with kindness to get what she wanted. That's a poor choice of words because she never killed anyone. (laughs) You catch more flies with honey. So Esme's determination would be in the right place as Lila. Okay. That would be so good. Uh Uh-huh. All right. I like that a whole lot better than her being Ryan's. Mm Mm-hmm. I like that a lot better. Yeah. Like a bajillion times better. Mm -hmm. When I saw that, I was like, I didn't know I needed that. Yes. Love it. We are on team 
make Esme Lila Ray. So that just gives us do, do, do. reality check. What's your up and down reality check? You just go first. <sighs> Mine is like blah. I'm not going to say or cry about it. It was the end of the week in my old house of 17 years. I hear about so much stuff. Everyone should be very proud of me because I am a hoarder so so much baby toys from like when matt was little and i threw out so much stuff good for you and then i donated all the stuff that was still good to people that had kids or to the daycare center like i was on top of it tons of clothes to goodwill very happy awesome so still have a ton of stuff in the garage at the new place that has to get put somewhere in the new house (laughs) i don't know how i have all this stuff but yeah don't just put it somewhere actually go through the I'm going to. When you find your boxes of VHS tapes, though, please, can we get them converted? Uh, I have those. I know right where they are. Okay. Cool. <laughs> There's only like three or four of them. Um, But I have different bins that are just like my Amanda bins. And it's everything from stuff when I was a kid slash teenager all the way up to... I've thought about that. I'm of like, the kids. There's stuff in the attic from when I was in high school. And I'm like, do I really need this? Should I still have this? I feel like you can have some. So I decided that I'm going to take my time and I probably have like five bins of just stuff. And I'm going to go through them and make one bin about each kid and then one bin that's like about me stuff that maybe they'll want to look at later. Because I think it's neat to look at the stuff from my moms and be like, wait, you paid $40 for this that would be a million dollars now, but you did pay this for this that would be like 20 bucks now? I don't understand. Right. Kind of stuff. Oh, and I found the lamp that was in my bedroom as a child and I was ready to throw it away and Madeline comes down the steps and I'm like, Madeline, I had a couple lamps there. And I'm like, Madeline, do you want any of these for your room? Because you need a lamp for your room. And she instantly was like, I love that one. I want that one. She did not even know the history of it. And it's extra, extra special because my mom painted it for me. And so now Madeline has it. And I'm so excited. I love that. Yep. Love it. So trying to find the silver linings and all the sadness, but I've cried more than I've ever cried in my entire life this week. So there you go. Do we think I still need my NSYNC marionette dolls? Because they're in my attic. <laughs> you probably sell those on eBay for some <laughs> stupid price, too. But, like, stuff like that. Can I'm I, like, can I just look like, that up? Because I, I, really, I really feel like you <laughs> could probably Jonathan get Taylor some. Thomas pictures. Like, I have a... <laughs> okay. Insane. Those you probably don't need if they're just, like, random pictures. They but... were my wallpaper literal wallpaper on my walls every single inch of my wall was jonathan taylor thomas <laughs> i thought i'd be married to him right now oh i guess they're not worth that much i'm sorry that's okay complete set of in sync collectible marionette dolls no strings attached to our 25 dollars <gasps> for the whole set five yeah. of them no mm-hmm. i'm good they're not five dollars each no okay i will hold on to them i'm just just telling you yeah doesn't look like you're getting much. Hmm. I'm sorry. Very sorry. So I'm not going to be able to retire on them? No. When we were cleaning out Ryan's apartment, he was like, he had this stupid helmet looking thing. And it's just plastic. And he's like, you can just throw that away. That's fine. I'm like, what is that from? It was some, if you pre-ordered a video game, then you got it free, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And so I looked it up and people on eBay are paying like 80 bucks for it. And I was like, you need to give me $80 to go gamble with. You can sell this on eBay. Don't throw it away. So, but that I felt like was justified. So it's totally free. So your instinct dolls you need to hold on to for another 20 years and your kids can sell them on eBay. Oh, okay. Okay. If eBay even still exists then. It'll just be under a different name or something. The concept will still exist. Maybe. So anyway, what's your up and down for your week? Not let's, what's in your, let's play what's in your attic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the week started off okay with, well, not even really okay, but. I wound up having to miss a friend's viewing because we went to the Van Gogh immersive experience, which I had been wanting to do for years. And it finally came to Pittsburgh and we bought our tickets the day that they came available. Then they had to push it back because of COVID. So we finally got to go. It was awesome. We met my son like a little bit halfway because he's never driven down in the city. Oh, okay. And I was like, yeah, I'm thinking on a Monday night is probably not the right time, especially at this time of year. It gets dark earlier. Right. And our downtown is horrible to figure out driving through so i was like 
we'll just meet you like 15 minutes outside the city, park your car at the mall, take you, yeah. whatever. So it was amazing. If you have the chance to go, go. Tickets are not cheap, but it was amazing. Like I cried at some parts of it just because like the music that they synced with the paintings were just like beautiful. So it was great. But then the next day I went to the funeral of, it's a friend's brother-in-law, but he had Down syndrome and lived well beyond the life expectancy. But it didn't occur to me until the priest started talking about how his disability never got in his way and everything. I've never been to someone with special needs funeral. So I just went next level crying because I'm like, I don't ever want to do this, but at the same time I can't die. So, right. You know, that's just the reality of being a parent of a child with special needs. Yeah. You're not allowed to die. Like that's, it's an unwritten rule. You're just not allowed to. Right. So that hit me a lot harder than I thought it was going to. Cause I mean, I, of course, like my heart is breaking for my friend and oh, her husband yes. and you know, they cared for him. Oh, wow. I mean, he lived with them. Wow. So, I mean, it was, and watching her, you know, just, and, and him too, but just like, I told her, she's like, I don't know why she's like, it, it didn't really hit her until they were finally like leaving the church and everything. I said, you were finally allowed to break down. Right. I'm like, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about something. I was like, you had, I was like, you were caring for him before you became a mother. I said, before you had your girls. Wow. You were caring for him. I was like, that's why this is affecting you so much. I said, because even though he was same age-ish, I'm like, you were his caregiver. Yeah. So, so there was that. And then I got a bike. It's called a mix bike. It's like a spin bike that has, it's not as expensive as the name brand one that you uh -huh. see all over the place, but it's very similar. Okay. So I got that. So I was like, woohoo, I finally have like my own little home spa going on because I also got, did I tell you about my portable sauna? No. <laughs> no. So last week I got my portable sauna and then this week I got my spin bike. So it's been great. Okay. <laughs> I have my bike set up next to my portable sauna and it's just, it's seriously, it's a pop-up sauna room that I sit in. Nice. Not the kind that has your head up above it because I don't understand those ones. I'm like, I need to sweat from top to bottom. Yeah. So this one has top to bottom. I sit in it. It's like a half hour of me time. It's great. And then I found out that one of my own managers from when I worked at a restaurant when the kids were born and pregnant with passed away from cancer. Oh, wow. And so like, we're just all connecting, you know, again on Facebook where he has two kids and he was married to, it was the kitchen manager was married to the general manager and they actually were allowed to continue working together, which is if wow. you've ever worked in a restaurant, like that doesn't happen, you know, typically. And it was a chain. So it's not like it yeah. was mom and pop, but you know, we're just all sharing in this Facebook messenger thread about, you know, memories and stuff like that. And then someone started talking about, I can't believe we've also lost so-and-so. We have lost 12 people oh my that gosh. I used to work with from a variety of things. That's awful. And I'm just like, cause I thought about it. So every now and again, like I go through my Facebook friends and I, I clean up Yeah, and I have way more people than I probably should at this point in my life that are deceased as friends on Facebook. And I'm just like, Oh, so that was hard. And we're planning, we're going to do a fundraiser for them and everything. And, but then my daughter and I had a spa day yesterday. I saw that the pictures was of that. So needed after this week. Cause I'm yes. like, oh my gosh. And I was more worried. Am I actually going to be able to turn off my brain? And I did. Good. I did. And it was absolutely gorgeous. It was, it's co called the Osiris Wellness Day Spa in the Pittsburgh area. It's in Evan City. Amazing. Go to it. They have a beautiful lounge. They have a little kitchenette that has snacks and drinks and there's, a few sitting areas all around. And then they also have a meditation room. So mm. it's really cool. We got our massages in a room that's over a hundred years old. It's actually the original part of the house that I guess everything else has been updated around it, but it's been kept up, but it's still in its original oh, neat. hundred plus. So did she like it as much she as she did? did. I was Yay! so nervous about that because she's never had a massage. Right. So 
she, she did really, really well. She was never like, are we done yet? Are we done yet? It was just awesome. We were good. So it was a lot of fun. So we had massage, massage, facials, manicures, and pedicures. So I'm jealous. It was so much fun. It was worth it. But, and (laughs) we met my husband for dinner and we're both just like sitting there, like super chill. (laughs) He's like, wow, you're both really quiet. And we're both like, we're tired. And I think by the time I got home, I just got changed. It was only like quarter to nine, but that's why I was sleeping is because I'm very glad I didn't call you at midnight is because I was just, I was so relaxed and I was just like, nope, I'm just going to bed. I'm not even going to try to do anything tonight. It's nine 17. I was asleep last night. Oh my God. Yeah. That's insane. But I slept. So. All right. Well, yeah, I was like, I'm either going to be an upper or downer this week. (laughs) You're a little bit of everything. Exactly. So join us on Thursday as we finally finish Alan Quartermain, 1987 to 89. I was going to say finish? No. Finish no, 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 the no. 80s. 80s, 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 finish, finish, finish the, the 80s. 80s. Yes, I'm sorry. The 80s. It will not be a nine hour podcast this week. No, God, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. But we are going to take a break in between the 80s and 90s, though. Just a little palate cleanser. Going to have a fan spotlight. So, Yeah. So join us on Thursday as we finish up the 80s only with Alan. Have a good week. And we'll meet at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Pier 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect. So if there is something that we missed or messed up, Just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com. 